In this video we're going to cover over schematic fundamentals into what you should be incorporating when you're designing your own schematics, how you should be designing them, what are some key things you should keep in mind of, and as well just some standard things that I believe should be across all schematics that most people will create. So what's important is having a, a good looking schematic, a decent schematic, or having all these like standards and keeping these things in mind. First off, it gives clarity to your schematic. So what is this? It showcases that it is clear you know what is going on, you know, the flow is right. We can read something from left to right, for example, that's how I like to do it. So, for example, your power pins, they go from left to right. Of course, this may not be the best example. I think it illustrates the clarity of it and is that there isn't any. You can see we have our power and our output is on the same path on the right hand side. And then we can see that there's not plus we don't know is it minus is it positive we have our ground symbols we're going going upwards sideways we have our net layers going up this all could have been easily moved around and such there wasn't too much to this and that even such simple changes could have been really avoided for this so for example what i usually like to do now is put everything to the left so if you get a component or you create a component like this and you form the day shape, you can see the components are left to right. But I would put this V in, you know, group these up V in on that side. I'll put leave this as it is, ground up on the bottom, have all the signals that I don't really need or care about to one side, group them all up, have them all connected to ground and such. So for example, these two grounds I would have put them together, kind of just grouping them up and seeing how it is. The feedback I could have put here instead of having this this port. So I could put it here and just tie it up there. It would, have, it would have gave so much more clarity and easy readability to it. I'm also missing the fact of net lay though. So when I came to routing this, there was just like net NEJ41 to NE42J2. Something like that. Your organization may have a standard. So depending if, you've, if you're working for a company or you're doing your, this yourself, it's particularly important for an for your type of blocks and your drawing numbers and such. It's just to keep traceability and that it, it keeps things much neater. You do not want something that's all over the place. It's all different. Everyone has their own different styles. It makes it it makes it quite hard to read and you're jumping about quite a bit. So have something standard that you do, such as components or let's take resistor values. So you can see in one schematic I use I think this is the American version for resistor where you draw a squiggly line on the British version and then in this schematic I had used a square block see there was no standard there and it's just these things I think just little things that could be really further improved on easy visibility and identification so again if we're going back to that example visibility it looks fine it's a simple enough circuit it's not too hurtful on the eyes yet still feels like they're on fire because of all these small little things that are popping out and they're quite frankly annoying again the net labels it doesn't make things it makes things incredibly difficult to route and there should be net labels for the important like the switching this should have been important so when someone is when someone is routing it it could have been much better it could have been identified that okay this is this is part of switching i need to keep this will be noisy i need to keep certain things away from it or i should follow the manufacturer's recommended layout if they do have something like that coming apart from the data so easy visibility identification i've labeled 24 to so 24 volts to 3.3 little step down converter so i know what this portion of circuit does it steps down 24 volts to 3.3 which is fine. I know that the data the components were taken from data shape external component selection. So I know where this person's got these components from, how is this circuit came about, which is fine. I think that's for most information, that's all I need. Didn't do any calculation. This was all took from the manufacturer's website or their data sheet. So I don't need any more information on this. A circuit like this, something I've just took off the internet. A circuit like this, something I've just took off the internet. I think for now you you all can see that so LM386, so it's a very standard op amp for audio purposes, entry level type thing. I think we've all built this circuit one way or another, or we fiddled around with it. Anything else, oh, not that bad. 
but look at these lines look how deceiving like and you could sort of argue that these nodes you know they, this means they're connected but it's, it's quite easy just to get mixed up with it and thinking they're connected to it when you're trying to read this schematic there's no net labels we don't know what anything does there's no information what this schematic does it's just been plain put out there we only have the product of it's an ln386 audio amplifier that's it we don't know what else it's doing we don't know what the expected values things like this things like this are quite important so we know for us later down the line but as well whoever else is reading the schematic we don't have something here like what's the input voltages what's the max we only have to look at this your schematic should be as readable as possible and that people can jump in they can get an understanding of it and you know step into your shoes kind of thing showcase intent this is similar to a clarity into that you want to give your user you know some intent so back to that example we don't know the intent of this user who drew this besides it's an audio amplifier circuit we do not know what they're doing what what all you signal maybe or you know was there calculations involved in getting all these values you know these things should be shown somewhere the title of it you know like a block diagram sectioned off so for this part of just kind of snipped it out i have this section of as connectors again not the best example in the world but certainly improving with net labels and facing things up except for this one you know i'm still facing things down but it was an improvement also also one thing to notice is that you can notice these little ridges and this is because i was switching between the grid size this is something i mentioned quite a bit and that keep your grid size the same so if you create your components in 2.54 millimeters or 100 mil keep that the same you don't need ridiculously low grid size to connect things up so if you create your component in 100 mil or 2.54 mm keep it the same when you're doing your schematic makes pcb design a lot more easier so this is what i was saying about net labels that it should be listed that it's a lot more easier to to handle when you have net labels it tells you the net that you set and that it gives a lot more information to it like is this a switching part is this something i need to be worthy of is what is this just a sound gpi open things like that it makes everything much easier last but not least key content should be available so from this example, uh, we said components were taken from datasheet external component selection. So we know these components, where they're from, whatever. An example like this, though, you say it's a it's standby controller, nothing too much into it, but why did I get these values? Why did I get these values? Some datasheets, when you look into your microcontroller, that it has seven, eight different configurations. If you look at the Nordic um, datasheet, 600 odd pages or so, they usually have eight different well the things i've worked with eight different configurations you can set or reference schematic it would be nice if you put in there why where did you get that schematic from what is the reference circuitry you use so for example it could be reference circuitry number eight high voltage or high input voltage configuration i don't know it could be something like that but letting the user know who it's reading and where did you get this from makes life a lot more easy. It's the same thing if you had calculations. So for example, this circuit here, maybe there were some calculations involved. Where did you get those calculations? Why can't I see any of those calculations shown? It's an easy way to validate. Someone else can check it easily and they don't need to go through the hassle of it. Jump through. I'm going to create this component, show you how I create components and how it's supposed to be labeled out and everything. And we're going to recreate one of these one of these key pieces of circuitry or maybe like the microcontroller for example we can recreate that and we'll show you how i like to do it how we can make it more easily accessible easy to read and as well putting that design into a snippet and we can be able to reuse it and dump it into a system again this could work throughout most ecad tools and such you may just need to have a look around and find it so it's one thing to notice is that i would never download the footprint so if you go into mauser for example you can see we have an ecad multi here for this microcontroller that we're about to create the footprint with or the schematic component if we click it here you can see how convenient it is we get a 3d model of our footprint and our symbol but take a look at this symbol you can only see like how difficult it is it's usually when it comes to these to the symbol creation they usually just go in order of the pin number based on the data sheet and what you get is this almost in this anti-clockwise fashion of what all the pins are in no shape order 
it's really quite inconvenient to do some routing around it and you see this a lot with data sheets or even reference schematics that ask you to use their to use their chip if we take a look at the nordic configure for nrf5 to a port if we click on the random circuit configuration this is what i was saying with the some some manufacturers they have different circuit configurations and such and it's best to label what circuit configuration you use uh, maybe this would be also quite a helpful configuration summary so it knows and this is what i mean so nothing against nordic or anything but it's it's quite clean quite well drawn and everything but it's this this chip configuration here that it goes around this anti-clockwise section and for now it seems like oh this is pretty decent it's got everything that i need i'm quite happy with it but what you fail to realize is when you start adding everything and everything else that you need it starts to get a little bit crowded so this is something i wouldn't suggest doing sometimes it could be wrong even so if we go here they only have the 3d model uh, for the package and this is something you can also incorporate is the 3d model of your design if it's given it's correct and you can lay this on top of your footprint very helpful for mechanical uh, reference checking for the height and such but going back over to their data sheet we can see that this is a bit difficult for our liking and we do not want to be doing this what we also can do is separate things into parts so heading over to our data sheet here for the stm32 wb15 we see our pinout description this is what we're going to base our design off of and this is how we're going to create our schematic footprint and we have the table here which we can set and everything notice that we have the different ios this is something also we're going to set within the table and we're gonna get to it so i'm with i'm within altium right now and what i'm gonna do is create a symbol i'm gonna click new component okay new component one have a look here we have a blank noted tool symbol wizard and this is what we get brought up with we have this symbol wizard here that we can enter display so for example over vdd is fine and if we know vda power pin lay this power and you can see the electrical type symbol changes over here something to note about these pin length is i tend to prefer to have them a bit longer actually see what's going on i think this is afterwards as well you can set this as a standard within altium what you want your pin lengths to be but we can carry on and you know we can put ground and we're going to say okay this is also a power pin okay let's say this is pb so this is pb1 this is just a standard gpio pin so i we can have input output and you can see the making the changes accordingly so this is what we're going to do for the rest of our schematic based on our data sheet we'll be back in a bit so we've created our data sheet here and you can still see it's something's a bit missing at the moment we have all this so we separated the parts of the power this is how i like to do it especially when you get larger microcontrollers or, or fpgas or whatever it is i tend to space them out into different parts so i usually like to go as power so our generic IO pins are what, what's related to the OSIT for the crystals that we can attach externally and the RF section of the circuit. You can see I've put the pins a bit longer. All fine and dandy. This is something that we like to have. You know, we can see everything we can put from go from left to right or we can separate out and so on. But this is how I would like to design my symbols and this is how I think is the most clear way to do so so if this vs is rf if we were really nitpicky we could put it down there and just have the vd whatever it really depends on you but we're not done there yet so this is just a bit extra uh, with its schematic creation but more so sim is including parameters see i've got no parameters here what i can do is add parameters i could put usually as a bare minimum bare minimum usually as a bare minimum i would like to put the manufacturer so i know this by st by st which is my or my st micro electron and i would like to put the part number and what this is is when i generate my bomb or we can export these parameters into our bomb this makes it easiest for us to collate before when i first started i didn't put any of these things that had no parameters and absolutely horrible to like manually place in these things it was bad i used to get different part numbers wrong because i was pulling in from different libraries and one of those horrible very bad so we're going to save that and this is overall how i would do such a thing for creation again you can use any ecap tool for this just a standard thing so now i've got a blank so now i've got a blank open sheet here not connected to any project whatsoever i'm going to show how i would like to set up a microcontroller for example and set up how can i reuse this microcontroller design based on what i've created and we don't have to keep redesigning every single time so as an example to start off with i can already see that the grid is already a bit off and we can see we're on five and if we change this to two five four and you can see how it lines up with the with the pins itself that i've set and change that to you question mark so depending we're changing that to you question mark so depending on where we place this in our project we can find a suitable numbering for it we don't keep changing so i'm just going to carry on and fast forward through this on how i'm placing component we can see it's a lot more visible easier to read we can see all the pinouts here we can they're going from powers left to right all we're missing now is just a title what this device is maybe a brief description of some sort if you need to but this is generally what i would do 
So after I've completed all this, you know, I've put some net labels in and these are just the standard parts. So all this people could connect to wherever they want to have a different configuration, but the standard power and crystal ensure that this device will work given that nothing else gets touched. So then we're going to go to the reuse block and you can see I've got a bit in here. So we're going to put MCU, put that there, select all of this, create snippet from selected object. So then I'm going to say this is SDM tool to WWB15, brief description of what that is. And I'm going to say, don't know, power, maybe the power generator, if it had any special features with it, with the full. So I'm going to put this part number after I've created my snippet and put description of what the device is. You can see here, I've just put an ice SPI 32 nanohertz crystal. So I can just say, just maybe the only extra is 32 nanohertz crystal bluetooth so i've already placed down the rf portion for the bluetooth antenna because the antenna i know that works and the matching for it i'm gonna create so this has appeared here so just before we end off this is another one that you've that i've been showcased on the channel before something i'd say that's quite easy and simple to see you can see there is everything has its own label and uh, what the function is of the purpose is we can see that we have everything net labeled as much as we possibly can to provide use for it and so if we go into the pcb we can see it has the net labels name besides the key things that we're not too bothered about. So we know that the I squared C lines is 3v3 SPI and we know what we are routing. So that is all and I hope you gained something, you've learned something new in how to create simple schematics and how to start off with and how to develop them further, how to make them easier to read amongst everyone. This is something I really highly encourage you to get into the habit of and even though it's a bit more extra work instead of just drawing all the lines, it's the schematic is not just meant for connecting everything up and ensuring it just connects directly to the PCB. Forget about it. There's so much more to it and having a good, easy, readable schematic allows you to identify mistakes much more easily and it allows you to go back when you're a few months later down the line and it allows you to pick up things much more faster as well for other purpose. To design it with the purpose, someone else is going to read it. How would they feel? How would they get that information? Imagine a person in your shoes.